Hi guys and welcome back to Mindset Learn Physical Science Grade 12 and I think we've got about I think 10, 10 minutes 10 minutes left to the end of this lesson. So guys, if there is anything that Tracy has been going over that you don't understand, please post it onto our page right about now and we will be trying to get to it at the end of the show. I'm trying to have a look here if there's any big ones that are um, mm -hmm. Coming out. Blue baby and estification are advantages of inorganic fertilizers? Question mark. They disadvantages. So disadvantages. You, yeah, blue baby syndrome and eutrophication are the disadvantages of over of over fertilization. So the point is, we need to fertilize, but a, and this this is the top sort of question that would come out of there. Okay, is you'll get asked um, give an advantage and disadvantage of using fertilizers now. The advantage of using fertilizers is the fact that we can grow crops quicker, we can rotate our crops better, so we can produce more food. But the disadvantages of using fertilizers is when we over-fertilize. So that means we put too much stuff into the ground, so we get um, too many nutrients in our drinking water, nitrogen leaks into the drinking water, we get blue baby syndrome, eutrophication, all of that sort of thing. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I think I'm going to let you carry on, okay. and then, guys, please post, and we're going to be answering them. I'm going to jump in in the, in last, the last five five minutes. If we can tell. If, 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 if the producer can put the time on the board for That'd us. That'd be great. So, carry yeah, on, Tracy. And like I'll say to my kids in class, you've got to ignore the pretty girl for a little bit now. Yes, And yes. focus on me. Oh, thanks, Tracy. <laughs> so sweet of you. In, in the acid girl, not oh. lady. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, so moving rude. on. Oh, sorry, it's when I well, you're a pretty woman. <laughs> thank you, thank yeah, you. Yes, there we go. Thank See, I tell my you. kids that all the time. Look, pay I'm attention. Only I'm only pulling your leg. Yeah, pay attention to the crazy pay lady. <laughs> the crazy lady. Okay, so... What I've got is I've actually got a very typical type question, and this comes from the November 2011 paper, from paper two, and it said to you that nitric acid is used in the preparation of fertilizers. The flow diagram below, they love, love, love flow diagrams, okay? Flow diagrams are great because we can ask you a lot of stuff around it. Shows three steps, A, B, and C, in the industrial preparation of nitric acid, and they show here, here that we have NH3, we add O2 to something, gives us N NO2, we then add oxygen to with something else, gives us N another one, so that's NO, gives us NO2, we add it to something else, gives me NO3. Now, these are the three steps we looked at earlier. Okay, so if we go back to where we did the Oswald process, which was there, okay, what this means for us is that the first thing we did, we added the NH3 to the O2 gives us NO. Then we added the NO to O2 gives us NO2. Then we added H2O to it, all right? So that's what they're asking. So now if we go back to the question, we go fine. We sort of know what's going on. And we say, first, write down the name of the, this industrial process in the preparation of nitric acid. Well, by now, hopefully you know. It's the Oz, oh, sorry, with an S, it's the Oswald process. Okay. Guys, the spelling becomes quite important because this is somebody's surname. And as much as you don't like people spelling your name wrong, they also don't like you to spell this man's name wrong. Then it says, next question, give the balanced equation for step B. Step B is the step here where I'm taking NO, adding oxygen to it, and getting NO2. So that's what we're going. So what they want here is we want the balanced equation. So it's got to be 2NO plus O2 gives me NO2, which is pretty much what I could have worked out from the process anyway. Now, next part of this question said, and I left the, the flow diagram up, NH3 Okay, the NH3 reacts with O2 to form two products in step A, two products. One of the products is the nitrogen monoxide. What, write down the name or formula of the other product, and it's water. It's H2O or water, so you need to know that. Then in step C, water is added to the reaction mixture. And this step can be represented as followed. How do we complete it? Well, it becomes O2, and we need to balance it. So we go 
There is one nitrogen, one nitrogen, five oxygens, three oxygens. Let's put a two in front of that and a two in front of there. And actually, that turns out that I then need to put, a, uh, we can actually take some of this out. This time is one of those things that we need to practice after a while. Please make sure you know how to balance equations. And we actually need to put a four there as well. Okay? Copy and fill in the missing reactant and balance the equation. So we've done that. Then, let's move on. Here it says to you, we have a 50 kilogram bag of fertilizer. It's labeled as shown in the diagram. I'm not sure if you can actually see, but the label says three to one to five. And in brackets, it says 30. So that's N, P, K. 30% of the bag is made up of those three things. And it says calculate the mass of the nitrogen present in this bag of fertilizer now. We need to first calculate the percentage of nitrogen. And the percentage of nitrogen is taking the ratio, number three, divide by the whole, all three of those together, which is three plus one plus five, which is nine, times in by the percentage purity, which is 30. So we're going to have um, nine over three times 30, and we get 10. So it's 10% of the bag is nitrogen, but they wanted the mass. So the mass of the nitrogen is going to be 50 kilograms times 10%. I'm about to put 30% there, times 10%, which means 5 kilograms. Okay, so 5 kilograms of that bag is the nitrogen. Now, I know I'm going really, really fast. And I really hope there's some questions before do we do. We've do we? Let's yeah. do those. Okay. Okay. Got, we've got like three okay. minutes. Okay. Let's 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 try. If if you see a good one, then you must just point, point. it. So I'm just <laughs> okay. I'm just Shut. I'm just gonna. Yeah. So what is anhydrous ammonia? And that one's from Monaco. I don't know if I've said that. Anhydrous. Um, that's an unusual way to say it. That's it's just probably me. No, it's no, no. It's just an unusual way to put the mm. ammonia. That would be ammonia without any water attached to it. So it would probably be like an ammonia gas. It just means that there's no water molecules around the ammonia. Um, anhydrous means that it's got no water attached. If it was hydrous, I've never heard of hydrous ammonia. That would mean it had water. But okay. it just means there's no water attached. Okay, cool. Now yep. I've got another question from a mindset. She's dying mm. to know, and I'm probably <laughs> going to say her name horribly wrong. That's okay. Um, I think it's Sna Loha, but I know how to say her <laughs> surname Kunju. So it's Miss Kunju, and she mm. wants to know um, why does um, CO3 dissolve with sulfuric acid when the contact process is the industrial preparation of sulfuric acid? <laughs> okay. Remember, the contact process is all the steps. It, it can't just be one process. So if we go back to it, okay, the, S, the, the name comes from step three, the contact process because we use a contact catalyst. But that's just the name, sweetie. The whole process happens in four steps because it is a process. It's not a single reaction. All right, I know it sounds a bit silly, but somebody made a decision along the way and decided to base it on the SO3. Also, in when you look at the conditions that this, react, this reaction determines the conditions, the fact that it takes place at about four, 500 degrees Celsius and at a very fairly low temp pressure of about one pressure, of about one atmosphere. So we have like 30 seconds. Okay, so what I'm going to do with my 30 seconds, Trace, yes. is I'm going to say goodbye to you. Thank you okay. so much for a fantastic no. show. <laughs> I oh, have minutes still, still. Oh, do we have a whole minute? Okay, she okay let's, let's, she let's just wants to get rid let's of squeeze me. one in. Let's squeeze, let's squeeze one in. <laughs> okay, let's fast. okay, let's have a look. Um Sandila says which important nutrients are required to support and sustain plant growth? I oh, know that's kind Nitrogen, of phosphorus, and potassium. I oh, know that was far too far. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those three, those are you there's a whole bunch of others. Sweetie, go look them up in your textbook, but those are your macronutrients. Okay, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. 
Okay, so guys. Now we are done. Now, <laughs> now we are done. I see on the clock it says 20 seconds. And I want to say thank you so much, Shanae, oh, for joining thank us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we all, Mindsetters, we all had such a great time. Thank you for posting so many awesome questions. And you guys go and, and you guys go out there and you get it and you, and you follow your dreams and you become those scientists. Thank you so much, Liberty, for making this show um, awesome and making it possible. You guys rock as usual. And grade 12s, this show is for you. Um, you guys rock. See you same time, same place next week. Bye.